So the change for us to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reach our peoples, it should start with us. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open His hands towards us, we should start changing what is within us. For us to start asking for the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should start changing what is within us. Today, inshallah, I will be touching on one of the dispositions that human beings uh, have. This is a disposition that enables a man to grow, it enables a man to digress depending on which angle or what you use it for. This type of disposition. It is one of the most disposition, one one of the most important disposition that I want to discuss today. It is a disposition, a disposition which is called uh, uh, that, which is habit. Habit. In a lemuwa, or it's a umuto aska kona upumel lemu pilo. Habit in a lemuwa, or it's a umuto upumel lemu. So it depends, as I've said, that we already suffer it. And in a human being, this is one of the dispositions that he has. Every human being. How do one human being acquire it? A disposition which is habit is acquired through birth. You can be born with some kind of habits that are attached to you through DNA. They just continue within you. And there are dispositions which are planted to you while you are young by your parents. 
externally from outside, they are not internal. You see, or your parents tell you what to do, and to a point where they become your part of you. And there are those which you acquire through when you, you are seeing how your parents, as they say, Barabana, they are they're like monkey see, monkey do. What you do on a daily basis in front of your children, they will adopt those actions and they will become their nature. They will become their own disposition or their own habits. Others, you acquire them. You make them as you are old because of pressure, social pressure that you, are, you find yourself in. It's either that social pressure, pressure rise you to do negative things. That's why we find ourselves, when we were youth, we were smoking, we were drinking, we were doing this, we were doing that. Why? Because of the social pressure that we are finding ourselves, the negative social pressure that we find ourselves. And it also can be a positive social pressure. That is where habits tailoring they help you to grow as a human being. So this is how we acquire them. One, we acquire them unconsciously. Other, we acquire them consciously. As I've said, one unconsciously is that they come to you through your DNA. They come through to you through your parents teaching you. You're not aware that what I'm doing is good or bad. But you are just doing them without being conscious whether what you are doing is good or bad. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Habit is one of the most important thing regarding the positive issues that are centered around human development. As I've said last week, we spoke about uh, the resolution. Today, I want to speak about one disposition that uh, will enable you to achieve those resolutions, which is a habit. A habit, Imam Ali says, meaning, habit is a second nature. It's a second nature. Meaning, you have your own nature as a human being, and then you have something that will assist you to achieve certain things. It is like your extended arm. Or it's like a second human being that assists you to do whatever that you want. Because as a human being, there are certain things you require. But once you develop a habit, you are creating another assistance that will help you to achieve whatever that you want. A habit. So one of the most important things that we should start being habited to or habitual to is salat and it is all the prerequisites of Islam. I'm saying this because that is the most prime or fundamental things that you should start with. In order to start achieving the things of this world and achieving the things of the hereafter. Because Islam guarantees you this world and the hereafter. But this world only guarantees you this world, but it never guarantees you the hereafter. So the prerequisite of Islam, one of the most prerequisite of Islam is Salah. Once you become habited towards Salah, you start seeing the fruits of that Salah in this world. Because one of the things that makes us to sin, or that makes us to be tempted, to be easily tempted into doing sins, is because we don't do a lot of salah. Because salah protects us from doing sin. I guarantee you, once you do salah regularly, you'll see the fruits, you'll see development in your life. By doing only salah. And all other prerequisites, like for instance, you don't lie, which are the most fundamental or the most common or human qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
advice, and also the world advises you. Because a human being that lies is frowned upon by all human beings, whether you belong to whatever denomination. A human being that steals is frowned upon by all humans. A human being that cheats is frowned upon by all humans. So therefore, those are other prerequisites that Islam condones. But the most prime is Salah. Build a habit around your Salah. Build your habit around Salah. You'll see, even the things that you want in life, they'll start happening. Why? Because you are now building a relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are building a tower that will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the quality of Salah, or the value of Salah. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was traveling Mi'raj and then was having this trip towards when he, he came so he came when he was traveling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was accompanied by who? by Jibra'il the most Closest angel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was accompanied by Jibrahim. And when there was a, a point where Jibrahim said, Na if Allah, well now you can continue. This is where I end. As an angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the station which I end. But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued. What is it that which Anailata Eka Anilorin Yemuza or Atwalapil where even Jibrail cannot cannot uh It was Salah. It was Salah. So what does that tell us? The very same thing which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was 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 Ainailata Bukun Hudimu. Is this the very same thing that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a point where Nabi Jibra'il cannot reach Salah. When we make Salah, we are building a tower. We are building the temple, as they say in the Kuli Krechi. We are building the temple towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are building a temple that will make us reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salat. So, the most important habit that we should develop as human, as Muslims, is to have a habit of Salah. Any other things can come there, can come up, but the most important one is Salah. Because that will be the first thing you'll be asked about. It is said, your actions, your actions, your good deeds, in this world, they are not accepted because of your salah. Mm. Imam Jafar says, He says, Your actions with salah is like a bow with an ear. They reach far. But your actions without salah is like a, you are having only a bow. You will only throw it near. You cannot throw it that far. So therefore, what determines the acceptance of our good deeds in this world as Muslims is salah. The first thing that we should do when we wake up is salah. The second thing that we do is salah. And the last thing before we sleep is salah. Mm. So salah, once we build a habit around salah, you will see your life it change. And it will encourage you to reach and to achieve 
all your dreams and ambitions because it guarantees you it is the door that guarantees you this world and it is the door that guarantees you the hereafter so now you will see what will happen once you become you, 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 you make your solar a habit especially the form of the solar it is said one, one of the, the, the Rafa, he said, if you make your salah on time, I guarantee you there will be spiritual growth. You will change. There will be change in your life. There will be change in your life. So how long should we devote ourselves to start making our salah? How long should we make it to a point where we feel, or now it becomes my nature now? It becomes my habit. There are those, uh, the psychologists and the traditions of Islam, it is said, devote yourself for only 40 days. Give yourself 40 days. Making salah on time, making salah without missing one salah. 40 days in you will see that salah will become your habit. It will be your extension. You feel it. without even an alarm. Because inside of you, there's something that feels or I have. It is time for me to wake up and start making salah. Out of Adhan, you will never even hesitate to start making salah. You will never even start uh, uh, we procrastinate or we extend the after one hour, two hours, three hours. Those thoughts will never come to you. Because why? Salah, so it will be like your second nature. It will be your second nature. It will be as if you, you have an extension, like your hand. How you use your hand to eat how you use your mouth to speak, how you use your feet to walk. Your salah, your, 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 you making salah, it will be like that. In, inside of you, you will feel it inside of you. And there will be an enormous growth inside of you. Why? Because you are committed to it. Why are we committed to it? Because it is the command of Allah Subhanahu First, that is the first thing. It is the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray, I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us, inshallah. Amen. And give us the strength to start making our salah on time. Amen. And then to start extending even our nafila going forward, inshallah. Amen. We hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let me add it to the name of that and it is the key towards success. Consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the shield against all evil that are intended to harm us. The taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the path that leads us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will lead us to our destiny, inshallah. So therefore I urge you and myself that we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the type of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the guide, that which we need as human beings. So inshallah, in my second khutbah, inshallah, I will touch on very small issues which I have developed currently, and then try to bring uh, my opinion or Islamic opinion on these issues. 
One, as we have seen uh, in the televisions, we have seen a, an act of aggression that has happened in USA against so-called the democracy of USA by the citizens of USA. This demonstrates nothing but the kind of the system and the civilian we have in USA. Not everyone in USA is evil. Not by the fact that the citizens are citizens of USA, therefore you are now an enemy of Islam. But we have seen a, a number of people, predominantly white, who have a tendency of using their own um, uh, privilege to advance any aggression towards anything they want. It's like that child, Elohim, he misbehaves and there's nothing happening to him. You just sit down and try to talk to him. And then the black people in the USA are those people whom even a child coughs and you just shout at him or shout at her. It is that child. So that is the type of the system that we see in the USA. That white people can just go and storm in any state building. Most important states building that are pillars of so-called democracy of USA. They can enter there and threaten people there, police, securities, and anyone, and nothing happens to them. But once, and with a unnecessary um, arguments that we are seeing coming out of USA from these white people. But here, we have black people who are advancing a humanitarian cry where we are sidelined. The system is against us. The police are killing us. But yet, they will be met with aggression from the state. They will be met with bullets. They will be, they will be met with being jailed. They will be met with all sorts of uh, mistreatment from the state or from the so-called democratic state of USA but white people can do as they please it shows you how far they can go these white people and still without being uh, reprimanded being put there to their place they can go as far as doing whatever they want we'll see once uh, a new president elect Echo USA come into a president, uh, presidential position of Utuetara. And then it was like, this is their ideology. There might be like a fraction of black people there, there are, but the ideology roots, the, the root of that ideology that has been pushed. It's white supremacist ideology. Wearing their t-shirts, they are supporting Afroforum. But Afroforum, we know that it's a white ideology, white supremacist ideology or organization or movement. So therefore, that is one thing that I want to highlight regarding what we, the incident that we have seen yesterday or the day before yesterday. Inshallah, also here, uh, we see a lot of people die because of the pandemic, the current pandemic, or the, 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 this pandemic that is been continuing in the Ebola Batuarona. And we see the manis, mismanagement of the spread of this pandemic. Some say that there's a hand, a government hand involved in the spreading of this pandemic. Some say it is the people, but that is some theories that are currently on the ground. But today, inshallah, we should start praying for, the, for these people who are met with this sickness. 
who are struggling with this sickness, who are affected by this sickness, and those who are continuous in the front line treating people who are faced with this sickness. We should pray for these people because these are the people, these are our people. These are our people and we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure them. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove this pandemic. Usually when the pandemic comes, it is the time for believers to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And stop uh, theorizing uh, what is about to happen or what will happen, who is what, politicizing this issue of the pandemic. People are dying. People are dying and then we don't even find it uh, to use two minutes to pray for those people. Two minutes, one minute. Muslim, non-Muslim, black, white, it's killing a lot of us especially those who are poor. So we are the poorest in this country. So we are heavily met with this pandemic. People are losing their jobs. People are losing their, their, their husbands, their, their wives, their children, their mothers, their fathers. So it is killing us. So therefore, we should start praying and to minimize uh, the, the conspiracies behind this pandemic. Yes, there are some true, some are false, but we should concentrate on uniting and start praying for people who are faced with this. Whether Bill Gates will make a million or not, not a million, our neighbors are dying. Our brothers and sisters are in the, are in the front line treating this pandemic, and some of them are get, get affected. Some of them are, are losing their jobs. We should start praying, inshallah, and use the opportunity to start praying for those who are affected and those who are fighting this disease and then who are in the front line treating this disease, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts, inshallah. Yeah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers who are affected by our, our sons and daughters who are affected by this pandemic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure them, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this challenge of COVID-19, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, daughters and sons who are in the front line, working, treating people who are affected by this disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the strength and protect them from this disease. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala